Hey Nathan here, welcome to the second video of the Flocking AI series. In this video we are going to discuss cohesion, the concepts behind bringing entities of a flock close together. So the way cohesion works is that entities far away, they have been introduced to the flock, they are part of the flock, they are members of the flock, they are far away, we need to bring them close together. So in order to do that, we have to steer the entity that we that is far away and point them to a center of mass of the flock. So let's say a flock has four members. Four entities. Three entities are nice and close together. One entity is far away from each other. So even though those three entities are nice and close together, they still need to participate in the cohesion algorithm. Let's take a look at one of the entities. Let's say we are looping through we are performing cohesion on the entity far away. So let me throw up some position values here. This entity has a position of x of 1, 3 of y. So its position is 1, 3. Its x position is 1, its y position is 3. This entity has a position of 4, 6. Its x is 4, its y is 6. The third entity has a position of 3, 7. Its x value is 3, its y value is 7. The last entity has a position of 4, 9. Its x is 4, its y is 9. So these are the position values of each entity in the flock. Let's calculate the cohesion of the entity at 1 comma 3. So in order to get cohesion we need to find the center of mass. The center of mass of every other entity in the flock other than yourself. So the flock has four members. We need to loop through every one of those members, every one of those entities, and perform those three algorithms per entity. So each entity in the flock needs to perform cohesion, separation, and alignment. So we're looking at one entity, we need to perform cohesion on that entity. So the cohesion looks at the center of mass of every other entity. So those three entities are part of the calculation, not the entity itself, just the other entities. So we need to find the center of mass of just those three other entities. Remember, we remove the and we remove ourselves from the calculation. So the center of mass, we calculate that by summing up all the vectors, the position vectors. The position values I have, I have told you before that are on the screen. The 4, 6, 3, 7, and 4, 9. The position values of those three entities. We need to sum all those together. So in order to do that, in order to sum vectors, we add up all the x values and then add up all the y values. So let's go ahead and do that. The x values are 4, 3, and 4. So 4 plus 4 is 8, and add 3 to that, that's 11. So that is the sum of the x. Now the y components of the positions are 6, 7, and 9. Add all those together, that gives us 22. So the sum of the positions that vector is 11 comma 22. 
So that's the sum of all of the position values of all the other entities other than ourselves. Now, we need to do one more step before we calculate the center of mass. We need to average that out. So that sum vector, we need to average that vector by the amount of entities we use to calculate it. So there are three entities in that calculation. So we need to divide that sum by three. So we take 11 divided by 3 and 22 divided by 3. That gives us a value of 3.666 repeating, comma, 7.333 repeating. So that is the center of mass, that 3.666, comma, 7.333. That vector is the center of mass. So that entity that's far away needs to move to that center of mass. Remember, this is an ongoing process. It will not, one second later, that center of mass will change. One game loop later, that center of mass will change. But for now, we need to move that entity to that center of mass. And then next game loop, we'll redo this calculation, and we'll need to move that entity to a different center of mass value. But that's right there is the center of mass. We need to move that entity to that. So in order to do that, we need to calculate a vector from our current position to the center of mass. And then we need to normalize that vector. If you've watched any of my previous tutorials in the past, I discuss why we normalize things. If you look at the Space Shooter series, the enemy always moves towards the player. So we're doing the same concept on that series where we have it wanting to go to a single location which is the player's location. However, if we do not normalize that vector, it will immediately jump to the desired location which we do not want. We want it to do we want it to be a smooth transition. We want it to follow the speed of the entity. Therefore, we normalize the vector. That way, it has a length of 1. We normalize the vector. It gives us a length of 1. Then we multiply it by the speed that the entity can travel. You might be 500 pixels away from that desired location. And in that case, the length of that vector will be 500 pixels. Which will result, if you do not normalize it, it will result in you traveling 500 pixels per second. Which, depending on your setup, your game, that might be way over your maximum speed that the entity can travel. So that's why we normalize any of these calculations. We normalize them. That way, and at the end, we normalize it again. That way, we can make sure that the entity is traveling within its allowed speed. So, what I've shown you was just one entity. This flock has four entities, so we're going to have to do it three more times. But the basic idea is the same each entity calculates the center of mass of all the other entities. That center of mass is the addition of all the position values that the other entities have. Once that's done, we divide that resulting vector by the number of entities in the calculation. That gives us the average position, which we refer to as the center of mass. Then we need to have that entity calculate a vector from itself to the center of mass. Then we need to normalize a vector and return that vector. That will be the influence on the entity. That normalized vector will be how the entity 
changes its course to correct itself. So this is cohesion. Cohesion is a process of bringing entities close together. The center of mass is different per entity because the entity that is getting influenced will be excluded from the calculation. So when we, when we go to the next entity that we need to perform the calculations, that entity will be excluded. So all these values that will need to be recalculated because the position of the center of mass will be different because we're using different entities in our calculation than the other entity. For example, if we take the entity at position 4, 6, if we want to calculate the center of mass of that entity, we need to include all the other entity, uh, entities in the flock. Remember before we calculated using the entity at 1, 3, that entity was not included in the calculation. But if we're looking at entity 4, 6, if we need to calculate cohesion for that entity, we need to include entity 1, 3. We need to include that entity because every calculation needs to have all the other entities included. The only entity that's not included in the calculation is the entity, your entity, your current entity. So this is the concepts behind cohesion. Always remember that the entities are always traveling. So any of these calculations are influencing the position and rotation of the entity. This is why we are using vectors for everything. These are called force vectors. If you watched any of my other artificial intelligence videos, Force vectors are very important in that the entity is traveling its own path and if it reaches a point where it needs to be influenced by something, it gives us a nice smooth transition. Let's take obstacle avoidance. It gives us a nice smooth avoidance of that obstacle instead of an immediate avoidance of it. You know, it'll rotate. It'll do a nice, smooth animation. It will not be an immediately 180-degree change. It'll be a nice, smooth transition. So this is why we use vectors, and this is why we normalize vectors. It gives us a nice, smooth animation. All right, next video, we will discuss the algorithm of cohesion. And we'll go into that, into the code, and discuss how to create the algorithm. And I will discuss a pseudocode implementation of that if you don't use X and A. So keep on the lookout for that. And then that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned about cohesion. We performed the process, so I hope you got the idea of it. All right, I'll see you next time for the algorithm discussion. Thanks for watching.